Hey everyone, CyberCDH here. Hope you're doing really well. Today's video is all about how to build an effective malware analysis lab. We've got lots to cover about the software, the hardware requirements as well, what kind of stuff you should have in your arsenal. So let's dive right in. All right, let's first start talking about why we need a malware analysis lab in the first place. Well, we need a safe place to detonate malware. We want to analyze malware in an environment that's not going to be impacting any other part of our corporate or home network. That would be a bad day at the office if we did. We want to perform behavioral analysis of malware. So we want to let it run, but we also want to monitor to see what it does. And also you might want to monitor to see what the malware does in an environment which mimics your corporate environment as well. So you can test the strength of your controls. We want to statically analyze code. So you want to pick apart the malware and you might want to step through it line by line to see what it does, find out the inner workings of the malware. And really in an incident response scenario, our malware lab is all about being able to super quickly spin up an environment, throw a piece of malware into it and grab as many key indicators of compromise and indicators of attack as possible so we can best defend our environment. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today, how we can set our environment up so we can spin it up super quickly, have it preloaded with all the tools that we need. I'll talk to you about the kind of software that I run and the hardware as well. But first, let's dive into the topic of hyper Hypervisors, what hypervisor is right for you and what should you be using in your environment for a malware analysis lab? Well, hypervisors, well, they're just a piece of software that is going to run our virtualized lab, our virtualized Windows or Linux or whatever distribution that we run. The hypervisor is the piece of software that's going to run that virtualized environment for us. And there's plenty to choose from on the market. Personally, I use a MacBook Pro, so I run VMware Fusion Pro and it's a commercial product. So I pay for the license, but super effective, really, really swish to use, loads of features I can geek out on. And it, to be honest with you, it's a system that I can just pull up and it just works every time and it's super useful for what I need it for. There are free alternatives as well though that you should definitely consider. You can use VMware Workstation. You can also use VirtualBox, which is a great free and open source alternative. Hyper-V is also great on Microsoft. And I hear great things about QEMU as well, especially if you want to emulate different architectures. And this is great for analyzing firmware analysis, all that kind of good stuff. But the key feature that we want from a hypervisor is the capability to support snapshots because we want to get our lab environment, our malware analysis, analysis lab into such a state it's preloaded with all of our tools it's got all of our environment set up so we can monitor malware we can rip it apart we can do whatever we need to do and we need to snapshot that so we can roll back to it at any point in time and that means we can infect it we can roll back to a clean state infect it again roll back to a clean state and you know each and every time that you're analyzing malware the indicators of compromise that you're looking at are coming from the actual malware that you're analyzing not from some pre-existing infection so snapshots absolutely key that's what you want in your life choose a hypervisor that's good for your environment depends on your os depends on your underlying hardware whichever one's going to work best for you but definitely take a look at vmware hyper v virtual box or qemu other ones as well comment down below see what you use see what works well in your environment and share that in the community as well so let's dive into the configuration of my hypervisor. So first off, I like to run a few different virtual machines. And so you can see that I'm armed and ready with a Windows 7 environment, and that's a 32-bit architecture. I've also got Windows 10, which is 64-bit. I also run Kali Linux, which is not necessarily all about malware analysis, but I do a bit of bug bounty hunting or a bit of kind of amateur pen testing, that kind of thing. And Kali Linux, obviously great tools for that side of things. On the malware side on Linux, I, I run Remnux, but if I'm honest, I don't tend to use that too often, if I'm honest with you. It's a great set of resources already preloaded onto that Linux distro, but I don't use it an awful lot, and I tend to just stick to my Windows environment. If you're looking to get Windows installed as a virtual machine, as in a malware lab, and you don't necessarily have a Windows license, you can get Windows 10 developer editions from Microsoft. I'll put the link in the description below free of charge, they're licensed for 90 days. You can just snapshot it on day zero and continue to roll back to that state. Preload it with all your tools. There's a great way where you can get Microsoft Windows into your lab environment and you can start loading it up with all of your monitoring tools as well. 
the key configuration, I tend to use default config, if I'm honest, when I'm making a virtual machine, I'll just give it a couple of gigs of RAM, I'll give it a couple of cores on the CPU, that kind of thing are fairly standard. I don't tend to do anything to make it look like a real environment because I know full well that malware can detect if it's in a virtualized environment super easily. So I don't really go to that many lengths to try and hide the fact that I'm creating a virtual machine here. If malware does have a feature that tries to analyze if it's in a VM or stuff like that and, and overcome and self-defend, then I'll just try and unpick that from the malware itself. And that's quite a good exercise. But here, the main feature the main configuration change that i do make is i put my virtual machines especially my malware analysis lab onto its own custom vm net adapter and what that means is i have a virtual machine network its own kind of vlan setup that's segregated from my home network so if i'm dealing with malware that laterally moves and looks for vulnerabilities in other areas of the network that i'm going to keep it isolated to this group of hosts which is all geared up for malware analysis and I don't mind them being infected. I'm not going to infect my host because I've disconnected that capability as well. So the VMs can talk to each other, but they can't talk to the rest of my network outside of that particular VLAN. So create a custom VM net adapter. The key is you can still have that connected to the internet. And if you do, you should definitely run a VPN as well. VPN, absolutely key on your underlying host operating system, just in case, because you wanna give yourself the most operational security possible. And realistically, we don't want to be releasing our IP address to the bad guys. And so, you know, giving away who we are, maybe where we work, that kind of thing. We wanna keep our operational security front and center. Okay, now let's talk about what tools I have loaded on my virtual machine in my malware analysis lab. So I'm ready to go with my assessments. Well, firstly, what I wanna do, especially when I'm dealing with executables, portable executables, I wanna do some initial assessment. And the best tool for that is PE Studio. Mark Oxenemeyer, who has developed and maintains this tool, has done an awesome job at giving you a super high level view of what a particular application does, but also, more importantly, where to go next in your analysis. I love P Studio because I can just throw it a binary. I can see whether it's got lookups on virus total. I can see the strings straight away. I can see the headers. I can see all of the metadata. I start pulling out some key forensics as well. And it's just a great tool to give me a flavor of what do I need to do next with this binary. So malware initial assessments tools, PE Studio is definitely a great one to have in your arsenal. Then really when I run the malware, I wanna monitor the processes. And really there's no better tool out there than as part of the sys internal suite from Microsoft is process monitor. De facto standard for monitoring process, network, registry, file system activity on a machine. And it's just, it's amazingly powerful how you can filter down, look at particular aspects, look at the tree view of applications, how they run, how they interact with each other, the command line of activity. Process monitor is a video topic on its own. I'll probably do one one day, but you should definitely get that in your life, learn how to play with the filters, and that will give you a great view of what is going on on the process activity side of things. Coupled with that, I like to use Process Hacker as well. Great tool because it gives you a live running view of what processes are on your machine, and then you can poke around the memory and all that kind of stuff. Look at the handles, the imports, that kind of thing. And then also as well, you wanna monitor the network activity of a device. And so a couple of things I use generally, I proxy my internet traffic through Burp Suite. That's not gonna capture everything because there are API calls from malware which will bypass the proxy settings on your machine and so therefore Burp Suite won't see everything. But that is great if you're analyzing like phishing infrastructure, any kind of web facing infrastructure. Burp Suite is great to proxy your traffic through and you can just see all of the hops in the URL redirects, all that kind of good stuff. But really for me, I like to use Microsoft Network Monitor. We have an old school tool. I don't tend to find Wireshark too user friendly for me, if I'm honest. I never really got my head around all the filters and all that kind of good stuff. But Microsoft Network Monitor, the feature that I like about it is it tells me what process and what process ID has generated the associated traffic. And I can quickly see all of the associated conversations as well. So it's just really easy for me to strip out and pull back and get rid of all of the noise that I see in Wireshark. And I can just focus in on the application and the processes that I'm interested in. Then persistent side of things, I wanna know is malware persistent? If I'm looking and hunting in my environment, what indicators do I need to see whether malware is present? Well, the best tool for that is auto runs. Again, part of sys internal suite, have that preloaded, have 
the whole sys internal suite in your path environment variable so you can just run these things from the command line it will save you loads of time and instant response you can just fire these tools up get them off and run in within a few seconds malware is analyzed you've got all of your indicators of compromise indicators of attack all that kind of good stuff so you can go hunting you can go protecting your environment these tools really make it super easy if you're interested in the registry side of things again process monitor is the key and then if you start once we got through the behavioral side of things you want to rip things apart and really get down down and dirty with some code well if you're looking at executables then debugging and disassembly you can use ida pro you can use old school ollie debug you can get down with the cool kids and use gidra alternatively i like to use x64 dbg i think it's a fascinating tool full of amazing features it's got decompiler built in as well from snowman and it's just it's just so user friendly that it's probably in terms of a debugger is probably the most user friendly one I've come across. So WinDBG as well, shouldn't forget that one. Get that in your arsenal, but see which one works for you. See which one you like the flavor of. It's more probably about the UI because let's be honest, they're all going to show you pretty much the same thing. But anyway, check them all out. And that's what you need in your environment. Again, kind of preload it, get it ready, get it ready to roll in, in your virtual lab. So when you do perform this analysis, you've just got all your tools at your feet fingertips if you can't be bothered installing all of those stuff yourself and if you don't kind of have that desire to go poking around all the different tools two distributions you should definitely get in your life well firstly get yourself a blank windows 10 virtual machine check out the link in microsoft as i said earlier in the description of this video get microsoft windows 10 installed and then you can just run a powershell script which will install flare vm flare vm from FireEye. it will just preload all of your virtual machine with all of the kind of monitoring tools behavioral analysis tools all the kind of free and open source stuff that you need to get going in your malware lab environment there's all the hard work for you you can just keep it up to date as well super great distribution that you should get in your life secondly from linux point of view i've already kind of touched upon this earlier is remnux remnux is preloaded with loads of tools from amazing people within this industry who've developed these capabilities and it's just everything is there for you to statically analyze code you can use remnux to analyze your network traffic from your windows machines all that kind of good stuff lenny zeltzer who maintains the distribution does a great job at keeping all the documentation up to date as well so again link in the description of this video go and check out remnux if you've never used it before and those two distributions on their own will give you a highly super effective malware analysis lab environment now let's also touch on the subject of sandboxing because it's super useful to have in our arsenal all of that kind of good stuff in our virtualized environment and all the tools and all the capabilities to analyze malware behavior and statically analyze code as well but really what we want to do is make our lives as easy as possible also because we might be coming up against malware which is self-defending it's really difficult to analyze it knows it's in a virtualized environment and you can't get the indicators of compromise that you need well guess what online sandboxes are really powerful tools that we should have in our arsenal but bear in mind we've got to maintain our operational security and if you're dealing with a highly sensitive file you're dealing with a customized attack against your environment you might want to share this kind of file with the open community so use these wisely but definitely check out hybrid analysis one of the most powerful sandbox engines i've come across i love the user interface i love all of the details it gives you all about the processes the network side of things the registry everything like that you get all of the indicators you need there's loads of public repos on the market at the moment as well for free if you do want to run something on premise that's not going to be talking to the cloud and letting people share these files with the rest of the community and giving away all of your state secrets then consider running cuckoo sandbox on premise that tends to be the de facto standard for people who want to get into sandboxing in a serious way it's an investment in time and capability to get one of these up and running but if you do invest the time you will get some great results out of cuckoo you can throw it binaries you can throw it various different files and it will perform exceptional levels of analysis for you but also there's a new player on the market elastic cloud have a look at the elastic cluster situation again you can host this yourself on premise if you want to go to the uh the pain and the, the setup of hosting your own elk stack all that kind of fun stuff if you're into it it is definitely a, an art form that i struggle with but the elastic cloud makes it super super easy to get into this space and you can deploy agents onto your lab environments and it's basically a free open source edr technology that will give you not quite a sandbox but great detection capability you can see whether or not this malware 
comes up against security controls, how it performs, and you can see the associated detection data augmented with your Windows logs, all that kind of good stuff as well in the Elastic Cloud. So definitely check out that. And it's a great blog post, which I'll link to again in the description of this video, which has recently come out from Elastic promoting this side of things. And you can get it for free if you host it all on premise as well. So definitely worth checking out. Okay, guys, we have taken a look at a lot of stuff there. And finally, what I should talk about is the subject of hardware. What hardware do I run in my environment which hosts all of this virtualized capability? So I run multiple VMs as we saw earlier. We run in different tools and technologies and online stuff, all the rest of it. What hardware am I running? Well, personally, I run a MacBook Pro. This bad boy's got 64 gig of RAM and it's a significant investment for me, but I find any machine with as much RAM as possible, I can run two or three virtual machines at once if I need to, along with snapshots, get plenty of disk space to store your snapshots. External storage is ideal for this kind of thing. You don't want to be running out of space and worrying if you're taking a snapshot during your analysis in an instant response scenario, running out of disk space, but also you don't want things to be slow and sluggish and all the rest of it. You want to give a couple of gigs, few gigs, four gigs, eight gigs, whatever to your virtual machine so they can run in a healthy state as well. So get a laptop, get some tin that's got enough RAM, enough CPU capability to host all of this good stuff. For years though, I spent most of my time analyzing malware on a beat up old MacBook that's somewhere there behind me that's got eight gig of RAM on the actual host itself. And I had to apportion gigs of that to my virtual machines and it was a little bit painful, but it can be done. So don't be put off. You don't need expensive equipment. You can also do some of this in the cloud as well, as I suggested with Elastic, etc. You can look at Azure environments too. They're definitely cost effective solutions. You don't have to have super expensive hardware to run all of this stuff. But I'll be honest, it does help if you invest in the side of things. So get onto your organizations, get them to give you these super high fidelity MacBooks, and hopefully it'll make your life a little bit easier in the malware analysis space. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Really enjoy the community comments, the questions, all that kind of interaction. So please keep it coming. You can follow me on Twitter at CyberCDH. And I really welcome your questions. Stay safe, stay healthy. Till next time. Thank you.